Not a day has passed without a piece of trash lying around the campus of Culver City High School. Littering is a long-standing global environmental issue, and CCHS continues to contribute to the problem as a high school in Los Angeles, infamous for its trash-filled streets. The littering issue at CCHS is greatly ignored and normalized as seen in the food scraps left everywhere on campus after lunch. So who are you? Uh, hello, my name is Matt Sumimoto. I'm a senior at CCHS. I'm one of the group members of the YPAR project, Reconsider Litter. So we always talk about the effects of littering, but what we don't discuss enough are the causes of the issue. So we came up with three research questions to help us with this research. The first one being, what is the main reason students continue to litter at CCHS? The second one being, how can we combat this issue at CCHS and in the US as a whole? And the third one being, what are the effects of littering specifically at CCHS? So, problem statement. Not to answer our own question, but we came to the conclusion that the main reason students trash the school is because of our American culture and taught attitude that makes littering acceptable. So the lack of a sense of emergency and normalizing and polluting the environment hurts the entire CCHS community, affecting the students, teachers, um, administrators, and the custodians especially, who work hard to keep our school clean. So although difficult, we need to not only raise awareness to physically get rid of trash, but shift the whole mentality and behavior of the students who continue to trash the grounds and just make long-lasting change in our school district, which our YPAR project is advocating for. The history of littering is not an extensive one, as littering really grew to become an issue in recent decades. But throughout history, developments and innovations and changes in technology have gradually led to this change in society. The U.S. experienced its era of industrial revolution in the 19th century when they saw the mechanization of agriculture and manufacturing and the introduction of new modes of transportation. With these developments came the increase in mass production of goods by machines. Families in the early 20th century began to enjoy the benefits of increased productivity, which led to mass consumption in America. Consequently, plastic production has drastically increased ever since where we now produce well over 100 million tons of plastic every year, with anywhere of up to 50% of that plastic being for single purpose use only. The biggest problem with littering and pollution is that what you throw on the ground ends up mostly in water. We in Southern California live very close to the Pacific Ocean, so anything that we leave behind on the ground when it rains, a lot of that is just gonna flow into sewer drains and ultimately out into waterways like the LA River and ultimately the Pacific Ocean. When it comes to littering, I think we have, a, first of all, I think we have a, a spectacular campus. I think it's beautiful around here. Um, and there's so much greenery, there's so much to, to, you know, to acknowledge. But when people litter, it just ruins the look. It really makes it seem like um, people don't care. What is your view on the littering problem at CCHS? Uh, rampant, ongoing, um, and needs intervention immediately. Uh, people that litter, I believe, have no respect for the environment. I don't, I don't think anyone likes to walk around a campus and see that's dirty. Most of it is food related, so things like containers, plastic wrap from the food containers, all of that is just kind of all over campus. My feeling, especially when, when it really gets to me, is um, lunch times when I see students walking away from their lunches, knowing that they're leaving something behind, or, or they'll throw trash at the trash can, miss, and then keep going. I've heard this really infuriating statement that the custodians are here for that. Uh, the custodians are not here for that. The custodians are here to wipe the, mop the floors and empty the trash. But when we create trash, it is our obligation to throw it into the trash can. And it's very frustrating to me because I've even seen kids not walk two feet to a trash can. It's a carpeted classroom and a computer lab, so really there is no food allowed in this class. But students being students, they like to sneak food. The problem is they don't like to throw anything away. They like to stash it here and there in the classroom. So not only do you find it on the floor, you find it in the, what used to be keyboard trays, underneath the tables. Whenever you leave trash with food in it, you're attracting pests. But the cockroach issue has become quite a problem. They, we come in here every day and find more and more of them. They're getting bolder too. Not to mention the birds, which I'm sure many, of, many people have been under the wrong bird at the wrong time. I didn't get shit on, but like it shot on right in front of me. Like, like my foot is here. But it was like close? Yeah, it was like an inch away.
crazy. How do you feel about that? I'm scared. Particularly in this building with the music room, ceramics room, film room, um, we've had infestations of, of mice coming in or trash being left. I've seen everything from, you know, mustard packets or gum or, you know, a candy bar or something that just is left somewhere and uh, gets eaten. Uh, my name is Armando Sparza and I've been a custodian here in uh, Culver City High for 15 years. I come in at uh, 6 in the morning and I get off at 2.30 and we usually go around campus and in front of the campus and uh, the whole school pick up paper and whatever tries us around and change the trash cans. I'm Alfonso and I'm a custodian. We contracted the agency to help clean up the school because it was a little bit dirty. And I like writing music on my free time and playing the guitar. We like to clean the, the campus so it can be a more safe and positive vibe and atmosphere for you guys. The boys' bathrooms, they like to prank us and put the toilet paper rolls in the toilet. So we would like it if you guys don't do that. It gives me more mad when I see that I'm in front of them and they just throw the trash right in front of me like they don't care. And graffiti is one of our biggest, biggest problems. So if you guys want to go graffiti, go on that wall in Venice. It says graffiti there, not, not on school property. I know you guys are tired studying and you guys just want to throw the trash on the ground, but do you guys part and, 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 and put it in the trash can. And the same as we respect you kids. We're going to school and uh, being students. I think we deserve the same respect as being as uh, adults and a worker. We don't get mad if you put it in in, in, in our little bed or in um, Miguel Armando's little cart. Just ask us and we'll, we'll, we'll do that for you guys because it helps us. Do you find that students in APES respond well to learning about littering? Um, most students that I talk to about littering respond well in class. I think what it does is it helps to educate the public. Um, educating the public and just making them more aware of the problem is a huge step in the right direction. But I do find that kids tend to hear what I'm saying about it, but I think it needs to be more of a school-wide campaign. Can you tell us a little bit about your school? Uh, I'm a student at Culver City High School. I'm a senior. And I litter sometimes. Oh, After I eat, but it's only really like, like fruit stuff. You know, and hope it like grows into a tree or something. <laughs> or I just kind of don't care. Do you litter outside for the pages? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like what? I don't like to litter like, like chip bags and stuff like that. Cause it'll just like stay there for a while. So, or even just like fruit stuff. So why do you litter? Because. The trash cans are too far away, or I don't know which one to put them in. You know, there's like the green one, the blue one, the black one. The what goes where? I don't know anymore, to be honest. Do you care about the environment? Yeah, I love the environment. I'm trying to work on it. Every day. Do you take these? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. And, um, no, I, I do care about the environment. I swear. I think the biggest cause of littering at CCHS is probably negligence or just plain like rebellion, they might say. Because a problem that we had, like just for instance last year with our like littering project that we did, a lot of students deliberately <laughs> um, kind of like threw it on the ground anyways, like not on the tarp and like onto the ground and like littered more just because we were like doing a project against it. So I feel like that's part of it. Also laziness. I think some people's laziness comes out in the form of just dropping their trash on the floor. People thinking that, well, it's not my job to clean up. But whose job is this? This are overworked, underpaid custodians. So that's a huge thing that our teachers union is striking about or is up in arms about is making sure that they're compensated fairly. So if we don't have a lot of those support staff to help clean up our campus, then the litter's just gonna build up. I think some kids don't like it here. I think some kids resent being controlled. We don't know what experiences every kid brings to school. And for some kids, all those rules is it's just too much. And so screw it, I'll just, what do I care where I throw my trash? I think a lot of it has to do with what the environment looks like. I mean, again, if it's a nice shiny new building, if it's Disneyland, if it's someplace beautiful, you don't tend to leave things behind. But if it's a place you either A, dislike, or B, 
the upkeep doesn't look all that great, then maybe that uh, contributes. The lack of ownership that a lot of students feel around campus, um, especially after the pandemic, I think when students came back, they didn't really view Culver City High School as their home. You know, not all students feel pride in, in keeping their own campus clean and, and being responsible, and, uh, and there's not really any consequence. Apart from interviews, testimonials, and online research, we conducted a survey to gain a deeper insight on students' perspectives of the campus littering. We noted that the majority of our responses were completed by students identifying as Asian or Pacific Islander slash Native Hawaiian students. Based on the responses, the majority of what people believe to be the main cause of the littering problem on campus was the fact that students were simply too lazy to walk up to trash cans and that students think that janitors slash custodians will clean up for them. Do you think it's possible to completely reduce littering at CCHS or in the U.S. as a whole? Ooh. No. No. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. It, you're never going to eliminate littering. If you mean like can we reduce it at all? I absolutely think so. Reducing it to nothing? No. That's the sad thing. I mean, it's it's part of society and our culture, and I don't know how that will ever uh, completely change. You know, I think that, I mean, the goal should be that we're all working in the process of educating each other and, and making this a better place. Nothing is impossible in this world, uh, so we all do our part, and uh, like I said, and uh, try, to, try to improve every day, we'll probably see the improvements. So how can we reduce litter? People brought up more trash cans. Maybe a few more trash cans. Get more of them across the campus. By putting you know, trash cans all over the campus. Student-led campaigns. I'd love to see a group of students who are passionate about it get together. Maybe ASB can really lead a campaign to do even more of that. Having both rewards and there was some real punishment. Educating others. I think that, that education is the, is the way to go. And educating people and, and helping them feel responsible for it. So we can limit trash produced during lunch. Limiting the spaces in which students can eat lunch. One, have a designated spot for all of the eating. Using more reusable and compostable, biodegradable materials. And although controversial, getting rid of the three slots in trash cans. If there's a bin, say drop it here, it goes in. I like being sustainable too, and I care about the environment. But the environment's not being helping by, helped by people who don't want to go use the slots and just leave the stuff everywhere. So as an attempt to fix this problem, we contacted the four administrators of our school to potentially talk about the littering on campus. And I don't know if they didn't get the email or something, but we haven't heard anything from them. We sent the first email on May 11th, then a follow-up on the tw 23rd. Still nothing. However, I think the admins have about 8,962 things to do, so I understand why littering isn't their number one priority. They already got too many things in their head, so they, they try to do their best. The admins are doing what they can, but there's only four of them, and this is a big school. This is not a job for the admins, and it's not a job for the teachers, not a job for the custodians. It's a job for the students. Yeah, changing people's habits especially as they get to be 16, 18 years old. But it would be nice. We need to begin the process from an early age. And I think that as a school district, if we can really work with um, um, the programs that deal with littering and focusing that on the younger students um, and getting them to just learn the behavior of cleaning and being clean and throwing away the trash. By teaching things at that young of an age, it can help carry over into the middle school and high school levels. I went to Japan as part of a Toyota-sponsored teacher program. You know, we observed a little bit of the class, then we had lunch, and they bring lunch to the classrooms. They don't have a cafeteria. And the kids helped pass out the food to all of the other students and to us as the teachers. We had lunch with them, uh, and then they, they cleaned up. They threw away all the trash themselves, and I saw them sweeping and getting down on the ground, picking up any crumb that they could find. I mean, they were very responsible about keeping that room clean, and that was third grade kids. Unlike the U.S., it's rare that you'll find a litter-filled street or a piece of trash in a public area in Japan. Because Japan is known for its clean streets and tidiness in public spaces, such as in school, where cleanliness is emphasized and taught to students. Japan makes it part of a child's education to learn how to clean up after themselves and take care of the environment they're in and the spaces they use. Schools in Japan set a designated time or period in the day 
for students to tidy up the classroom and the school. This way, children are taught discipline and integrity, which are seen as fundamental in Japan at an early age. There are a lot of factors as to why it's cleaner in Japan, you know, like conformity, their unique values, and very strict trash policies. So if we try to implement some of their habits to our culture, we might want to see a change. And as a group, we believe that creating a dedicated cleanup time for our district's elementary schools is the most effective way to reduce litter in Culver City High School. So why not take action in high school? Well, that was our initial plan. Our initial plan was to make this documentary and ask teachers, probably like the eighth and ethnic lit teachers, to show this to their classes. But what we realize is that showing the video is probably not going to immediately change people's littering habits as they've you know, developed over their lifetime. So littering is part of our school's culture. So unless we change the culture, very little we do will have a lasting impact. So that's why we want to address the root cause of littering and prevent it from ever becoming an issue in the first place, which is why we want to work with our districts of elementary schools and specifically the El Marino admins and teachers. So we want to contact the Japanese teachers and the admins to propose a bell schedule with a dedicated cleanup time every day. Since this dedicated cleanup time is part of the Japanese school culture already, we feel like the Japanese Immersion Program Department and the parents will be more open and engaged in this idea. And they're simply easier for us to approach because some of us are JIP alumni. If we can successfully implement this new proposal, we hope this new routine can spread to the whole school and other elementary schools in CCUSD. The ultimate goal though is to continue the routine to middle school then into high school. By then, everyone would ideally have this mindset of taking care of their environment and in this way we hope to greatly reduce the amount of litter at CCHS.